Use the dot tool to graph the five key points of the function, then select either the sine or cosine tool to graph the function. The function is f of x equals negative 5 cosine of 3 sevenths x. So because it's negative 5 cosine, this cosine is going to start at a minimum, then it's going to go to an x-intercept, then it's going to go to a maximum, then it's going to go to another x-intercept, then it's back on a minimum, because the coefficient negative 5 is negative. If the 5 were positive and it were positive 5 cosine, then it would start at a maximum x-intercept minimum x-intercept maximum. The minimums and maximums would flip-flop. So, let's see. The minimum of a cosine, the first one, occurs at 0. Then the x-intercept would be at pi over 2. Then the maximum would be at pi. Then the next x-intercept would be at 3 pi over 2, and the next minimum would be at 2 pi. That would be if it were just the cosine of x. But this is the cosine of 3 sevenths x. So the angle is actually 3 3 sevenths of x, and I need to know where that angle would be equal to either 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi, the quadrantal angles. So I go through and I can solve these five equations simultaneously. First thing I want to do is multiply both sides of all five equations by 7. When I multiply the left side of the equations by 7, all of them just give me 3x when the 7s cancel. If I multiply the right sides, well, all five of them, the first one is going to be 7 times 0, which is 0, then 7 times pi over 2, which is 7 pi over 2, then 7 times pi, which is 7 pi, then 7 times 3 pi over 2, which is 21 pi over 2, and then 7 times 2 pi, which is 14 pi. Then lastly, I just divide everything by 3. So I divide all by 3. And I'll get that x, once these cancel, is equal to 3 divided by 0, or, or 0 divided by 3 is 0. 7 pi over 2 divided by 3 is 7 pi over 6. Uh, 7 pi over 3 is just itself. 21 pi over 2 divided by 3 is 21 pi over 6. And then 14 pi over 3 is just itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the five key points then. The first one is a minimum. That's going to be at 0, negative 5. So the x value is 0. The y value is the coefficient of the cosine, negative 5. Then the next key point is going to be 7 pi over 6, which is that x value, comma, 0, because that's going to be an x-intercept. So the second key point is an x-intercept. The next one is 7 pi over 3, comma, positive 5, the opposite of a. The opposite is negative 5 cosine, so this is going to be the maximum positive 5. Then the next point is going to be, well, 21 pi over 6, 3 goes into 21, and 3 goes into 6. 3 goes into 21 7 times, and 3 goes into 6 twice. So 21 pi over 6 is really simplified to 7 pi over 2. And that's going to be another x-intercept. And the last of the five key points is at 14 pi over 3. And at 14 pi over 3, we're going to have a minimum again. So let's go ahead and graph those five key points. I first select the dot tool underneath the graph. And then I plot 0, negative 5. I plot 7 pi over 6, 0. 7 pi over 6 is right after 6 pi over 6, and 6 pi over 6 is pi, so 7 pi over 6 is right after that. 7 pi over 6, 0. Then I have 7 pi over 3, 5. 7 pi over 3, 5. And then I have 7 pi over 2, 0. My next x-intercept is at 7 pi over 2. But if you remember, 7 pi over 2 was a reduction of 21 pi over 6. Well, 10 pi over 3 is actually 20 pi over 6. So right after 20 pi over 6, I'd have 21 pi over 6. So I plot my point at 21 pi over 6, 0. 
or 7 pi over 2, 0. And then the last point is going to be 14 pi over 3, negative 5. So I go over to 14 pi over 3, and I plot a point at negative 5. Let's see, negative 5 is down here. So that's this point right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, no, this point. I think I graphed too many points. All right, well, last thing I need to do then is to select the cosine. The cosine is the one on the left where I have to identify a minimum and a maximum. So I select the cosine tool, I graph one minimum and the next maximum consecutively, and I notice that it goes through all my key points there, so I think I did it correctly, and that is how you do it.